Hello and welcome. My name is Jo, Jo Quincy, uh, Certified Zentangle Teacher um, and from uh, Zen Jo Zentangle on Facebook. And uh, today I'm going to take you through the steps to create the tangle What the Well. And uh, it's created by Jodi Genovese, CZT in the USA. And the tangle is based upon, uh, it's a tangulation, which is a, a sort of a uh, going off from the original tangle and making it into something different. Of the tangle well by um, Zen Tangle Headquarters. So I'm going to just move that out of the way. Now I'm going to just show you, take you through what well is, just as a reminder. I've just done a, a really just basic grid here. And it's important to understand well so that we can create what the well. So well starts off. Now I'm going to do it just within these squares to begin with. And we start with an orb. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do four of them here. Okay. And I'm using, what am I using? I'm using a 05 micron in black. So once you've done your orbs, we need to uh, draw lines from it using the technique of take off and land. So by that we mean, so I take off, so I start my pen line on the orb, so and then I take off and continue that curve and I land it in the corner. Okay, turn my tile, I take off continue that curve until it lands in the corner. So you keep doing this, take off and land. And take off and land. So that is a basic well. And if we do them repeatedly, take off and land, and we do them going in the same direction, you don't have to, but I'm just showing you the basic construction of well. Turn your tile. And you see, you start getting this meta pattern. And a meta pattern is a pattern you haven't actually drawn, but appears with the combination of lines that you put on the paper. So that is the action of creating well and you can create well in a number of different spaces it doesn't have to be in a grid it doesn't have to be in a square so let's have a little look i'll just come across let me just uh i'll tell you what i'll just do it in this i'm just going to divide these into triangles like so what if i put orbs in these sections you'll see when you do them in the sort of center of the triangles what you get you get a circle of orbs pretty clever isn't it which you don't intend to do but it happens because you're plonking the orb in the center so we're going to do that take off and land in the corner here i've only got three corners to aim for so it's going to be a three armed well and I'm doing all these in the same direction. And you end up with that same meta pattern. Okay. So that's just a little reminder of the action of drawing well. It's really, it's a lovely action to do. When you're doing it, it just feels sort of calming and... I think it's it's this focused curve that you're doing and look at this absolutely fantastic meta pattern that is being created by drawing these well shapes in these triangles look at that how amazing is that so that's for a whole other class, a whole other session. So that is the Tangle Well by Zen Tangle Headquarters. Okay, let's move that to the side. 
I'm going to grab a Zentangle square three and a half inch white tile and I'm going to grab my pencil like so and um, I'm not no I am going to put dots on a border do you know when I'm teaching or when I'm doing a class I frequently go oh, do you know no I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way and I think that's that's just a reflection of what Zentangle is. You can alter where you're going or what you're doing at any point. So I've done my dots and a border. I'm now going to divide this to create a grid and I'm gonna do this very lightly. So I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom in the middle, which is around about here. And I'm only going to do it very lightly because this sort of moves away a little bit from step outs on uh, that have been created. But I found that this gives me a nice even structure of my what the well. And then I turn my tile and I create another very light grid. So you've got 16 little boxes. I have to think then, my maths isn't brilliant. Okay, so there we are. Four on the top, four on the side. Pop your pencil to one side and grab your pen. Now, I'm going to use a 05, um, but you can use whatever. Um, I actually really like using 02s. 01s are great, and I have a 01 here for some elements of what the well. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pop orbs into some of these boxes. Let me just move this out a little bit. Let's move that up there. Okay, and then move that in there. It gives me a little bit of arm space underneath. And what we're going to do is we're going to put orbs. At what I, it, now, this was a tip that came from one of my students when I was teaching in a tangle club, Luann Smith in Washington State. And uh, she said, how about doing this way so that you don't get confused? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pop an orb in alternate boxes. OK, we will be doing the others. But this just helped everybody that I taught in Tangle Club not to get in a little bit of a muddle. OK, so you've got those nice orbs, alternate boxes all the way along. And in those, we're going to do a takeoff and land, but we're not going to go straight to the edge of the corner. What we're going to do is we're going to do that same takeoff and stop mid-flight. Get your parachute out and jump, okay? We're going to do take off, stop mid-flight. So that's what we're gonna do on all of these. I'm keeping the arms roughly about the same length. As we go along with um, drawing this tangle, I'll be able to show you that if, if the arms aren't long enough, we can extend them as we go along. So don't worry about that. Okay, so you're going to do halfway round. Do that take off. Oop, stop, jump out with your parachute. Okay. And what's lovely about doing orbs staggered like this initially is that you don't get confused and start doing this same rotation on the other squares so we're literally just bringing this around like so and like so so easy peasy you can all do this some of these tangles, when you look at the final sort of construction of it, you can panic yourself out of giving it a go. Um, I always say, well, just remember Zentangle. 
one pen stroke at a time. If you follow the step out, you can definitely, definitely do this. Okay. And so I'm almost at the end of my series of well where I'm starting from the right and curving them round to the left. You can see with every one I'm turning my tile like so and like so. Right, so there we have our first start of what, well, I always think it looks like one of those cushions with buttons in and they, they're all sort of squishing down into the cushion. So now we're going to put your orbs in the remaining squares. Like this. Okay. This time we're going to, we did these right to left, we're going to do our um, arms coming off uh, from left to right, so they're opposite. So with that one I'm going to go round and it comes off that way. Okay, and once you've done the first one, you can sort of follow around. Now, with the first ones, you can see, can you see how there's, when you look at this way, there's an arch over the top so you're sort of aiming for those two like marry up not meet but marry up and it's the same with these two here they sort of stop together okay ish it's just if I tell you that at the beginning then you can start to say well okay I'm going to aim for a roundabout there for my curve because then it would if I continued it would line up with that one so you can do the same with this one you can line it up, but it also marries up with this. Okay, so that's that first one. You're now going to do this one so you can say, well, it needs to go to about there because that sort of is the length of that one. And curve it round. Okay. And this one, I've just extended that a little bit. It's going to aim for about there. We haven't got one to marry up with, but we know we're going to aim for this. So it curves it round. And we're actually landing. We're jumping out and not going to the corner, but we're landing on maybe a visual dot. You don't have to put a dot, but sometimes it just helps pop a little mark and it gives you a space to aim for. So you've got these arches going this way and, okay, going this way and going this way. And then you've also got these points where you look and these two would end. So you'd end up with a little, it looks like a little mushroom actually, that way. It looks like a little mushroom that way if you envisage lines being drawn to join them up. So let's do the next ones. Let's start on this way round now. So I'll make it easy on myself. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to aim for a roundabout there. That marries up with that and it also marries up with that. That simple curve. Take off. Stop mid-flight. This one's going to go to a roundabout here. round you don't have to do the dots you can actually just start doing it visually and going okay that's going to go to about there and you know I said if you don't make them long enough those first ones you can just say that's it they, they that looks okay okay same with that one I'm now going to do this one so it's going to aim for around about here and this would marry up with this because this has to marry up with this one. So I'm going to aim for, I'm going to extend that one a little bit and I'm going to take it to there. Can you see now you've got your arches and you've got your little bottoms of your mushrooms, bottoms of your mushrooms. I've only just thought of that, mushrooms. Okay, so this one's going to come to here. 
So take your time with this. There's no rush with any of this. And you start seeing this sort of framework start to appear of your what the well. So this one has to come to around about there and it marries up with that. There you go, so that's your first one. This one will come to about, I want it to come to about there. This one has to come down a little bit more. There you go. It's okay to go back and add a little more to your line. Um, there isn't a problem with that at all. Okay, so this one now, I just need it to come down a little bit. So have a look at what you're, you, you have to sort of learn to envisage what you're seeing, the framework of it. Okay. Turn this back. Now I'm going to do this one. So it's going to have a look here and it's going to come to about there. Yep, that's marry up. That sort of would marry up. And it comes over. Okay, so it forms the start of that arch. This one I want to bring down a bit more and I'm going to bring it to there. Everything is doable. Everything is possible for you to draw. No matter what level of tangler you are if you're a complete beginner you can still do this okay you can still do this by adding these one strokes at a time and you're looking at the piece that you're doing now don't worry about all this we'll do something else with that eventually here that one has to marry up with there and then it has to marry up with this so it's going to go to about there and curve that round I want that to come down a little way to there Excuse me. You know, when you're recording, you dread getting like a cough in the middle of it. And uh, we're all human. We're all human. Okay, and this one's going to come to about there. So I'm hoping that you can begin to see how you can do this by eye without having to make any dots. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you can do a little dot as a guideline if you need to. So by doing those alternate orbs at the right at the beginning, it meant that it was clear which ones we were going to be doing. OK, so it doesn't matter which way you go now. I'm going to go that way with one from the left through the right to the left to start with so what are we going to do next what we're going to do is we are going to close off the bottoms of your mushrooms don't worry about this top line at the moment so find an arch and you can close that off okay but to do it you can go along and do all of them but what we're going to do is close it off then I want you to do a little triangle on either side and ink that in. And you can make that line a little bit darker if you want. Can you see by making that dark, it looks like this is going into something, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to do the same here. Close off the bottom. You can extend this out a little way if you want and then do a little triangle. Now I'm doing what I call sharp edge triangles. You can do them slightly rounded if you want it to. I'm going to move along to the second row. Find the one that's here. I'm going to close off the bottom of that mushroom and add in a little triangle with a little bit of ink. So I'm doing all the same ones from the same direction to begin with. Make it easy on yourself. Don't try and... Go backwards and forwards, unless that's your preferred way. So I'm going to do these first of all, like so. Okay, and then there's this one. So you can see, if I've drawn my lines straight, I might have to just extend those little arms just so they meet up, and that's okay. 
Right, so those are those ones. Let's turn our tile all the way the other direction. And now we can do these ones. Close that off, add in a little triangle. Close that off, little triangle. Okay, close this off. Little triangle. And now what you can see has happened is these look like they go underneath. So you're sort of connecting the tangle. Your eyes will visually go, that's where it is, that's where it is. Now come to this one. Close off your mushroom. And by adding dark to any of your tiles, will uh, darkness uh, gives the impression of depth. I always say this with shade. So if you add black like this, your eyes perceive it to be deeper and looks like it's going underneath. So it's a good good thing, trick to remember, really. How simple is that? So we've done those. So we did them one way, we did them the other. Now just turn it a half turn because you've got them here as well. Here and here. Okay. So I'm trying to sort of say, let's just do these simply. So you're just looking for the bases of these mushrooms and doing them in some sort of logical order. I mean, you can always go back and... There's always one that you miss out, isn't there? I say that in my Tangle Club because I do that quite a lot. I go, there we are, we finished. Oh, no, we haven't. There's another one just to fill in, whatever it might be. And... So that's that way, and that's this way. So now we can turn this on its head completely. And we, oh, I did. I missed one out. Come on. I missed one out. There you are. Just talking about missing one out, and there it is. I only knew because I looked round and went, oh, there it is. It's the one in the middle. But you'll see them. You can see them. Turn it on its head. Now I can do these ones. Isn't it fab how this sort of comes to life and you go, oh yeah, that's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Sometimes we can convince ourselves we can't do something, whether it's Zentangle or whether it's anything else. And if we just go, let's give it a go, let's give it a go, you either will or you won't. But if you find that you haven't been able to do something, you will have learned from it. You will have uh, had an experience um, that you can use in a positive way. Um, with tangling, I always say that, do you know, if a line goes in the wrong direction, you can go, hmm, what I've learned is I won't do that again. Or what I've learned is actually that's a brilliant way of doing something. Okay. So what we have got, if you look here, we've got, let me have a look, which is going to be the best way to show you. Let me show you on these bits here. So if you look here, that's a half an arch, isn't it? This would be the bottom of a mushroom. So I'm closing that off there and I'm going to put a half triangle there. You can get clever now because you can go down to this one and do it upside down. Close off that one and pop a little um a little whatever that is triangle my brain went blank then close that off a little triangle close that off a little triangle okay you can also turn your tile i've missed this one out on the bottom here so just go around looking for the bases of triangle of mushrooms the stalks and doing those little closed off bits okay and you will find that they are there. Here I've got one base, half base, half a triangle. So maybe go round the edge of your tile, looking for these half mushrooms. Close off the base and pop your little triangle. Upside down one, close off the base, little triangle and one down here. 
I've just extended the arm a little bit there. You get a visual feel for it. Close off. Okay, can you see how it's tidying up all that edge now? So now we're going to go here. There's my half mushroom. I can close off, add a triangle. Upside down one, close off. This one here, close it off. And a triangle. So I like to do videos in real time rather than speeding it up. Um, and then you get a sense of uh, just being here with me and I'm doing it. That's my excuse for not having a clue about how to speed up and slow down. And I definitely don't like adding, I don't like videos that have lots of noisy music and things. Um, because that's not Zentangle. Zentangle's calm and quiet. Now, look at that. Just by adding some amazing lines. So I've put the lid on my 05 and I'm going to go for my 01 now. I'm also going to have a bit of a slurp of my cup of coffee that I've got here. Just gives you time to have a look at what beauty you've got there. You could leave it like that. Um, but with What the Well, uh, we can add some auras. And that's why I'm using a zero one. So the first aura, I'm going to go back to some of these inked in triangle bases. And with my zero one, I'm going to do a nice aura close around the bottoms. A nice aura close around the bottom. So I'm going to look for all of these and I can do this with the upside down ones as well. Okay, so there's an aura. Okay, come down to this one. Aura around and this starts giving it a bit of class. It starts making it, brings it all together. Um, you may well want to stop at the stage we were just a minute ago before I started doing the auras because you might suddenly go, wow, I can do this, that or the other with it and do that, you know, go and come play with tangles. It's not about doing exactly the same as everybody else. It's about finding your own creativity and that's something I encourage people in my classes and in my tangle club just go and play and find what really suits you okay doing a quarter turn and I'm gonna go and find these so just quietly add your auras oh, I'm do quarter ones here I'm trying to say them as I go along. Okay, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see how it starts changing this tangle yet again. And I know that Jodie, who created this tangulation, um, she's done a lot of great versions of tangles. Um, and I, I really, really like this one. I like the repetition. I like the final image. And I like the fact that it opens up so many possibilities for embellishment by adding your own individual creativity to what you're doing. Okay. And I'm hoping now you can see how... This is, oh, I've gone out, done these ones now. My brain is saying, there's some, there's some. And this is what happens. Your brain will start going, oh, there's ones you need to do. There's ones you need to do. So I'm going to look, 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 look. Here's some on the side here, this one. Just have a good scan of your tile to find the ones that still need their aura love. Okay. And, do you know, even though I'm scanning it, I sort of think, oh, I bet there's one I've missed, missed out. But maybe I haven't. 
Okay, so we've done the auras around those bases. Now I want you to, I'm going to do it this way, so I've got two arched ways at the top. What we're going to do is we are going to have a look at that original well shape. So you, your eyes go from the well shape to the, the what I call mushroom shape or a shield shape. But find those original arms. And I want you to aura over the top of those original arms of that well. Okay, aura over the top. If you're familiar with the tangle Huggins... Um, you do something very similar with Huggins and you're just going to aura. I found it was easier to find the original curves of well here. There's my orb. Here's the arms going off and just add an aura like so. It was more logical to do it that way. The other way that I originally thought of was find your arch and do the legs going down to your mushroom. But that meant you were jumping around. So finding your well shape, making an aura on the outside of those original arms you'll cover all your bases, you'll get them all done. And you can see using a finer pen compared to the five that I used, um, just gives another dimension, another texture. Um, so I, I do change pens when I'm tangling for different purposes, whether it's a finer line, a finer point, thicker line, a bolder line, uh, you know, there's nothing that says you have to just use one, one type of pen. I think when I first started tangling, I used a zero one all the time. I now uh, tend to favour zero twos and zero fives um, and ones for things like this and maybe fine rounding. Um, more delicate pen work. So what I find is I end up looking at these single well shapes and I simply don't focus on the whole tile um, because I know by adding these it's all coming together. This one down this way. my tile a little bit, make it comfy for yourself. And I do this way. Like so. And we're almost done. Almost done with your pen work. There's my last one. And that is What the Well with its basic pen work. So I'm now just going to show you how you can shade um, What the Well um, in this simple form. I really, really like it in this simple form. But I will show you, I, I, I will um, show you another two tiles just with some sort of ideas. Um, uh, of other things you can do with it. So what are we going to do to shade this? Remember I said shade adds depth. Let's look for where these little mushroom arms are going underneath. So I want to add some graphite there and I'm going to add some graphite there. Using the side of my pencil, I'm going to fix it in place and just soften it up a little bit so it's nice and dark there. Fix it in place, bring it up. Okay, so I am going to look for all those bases where they go into um, the 
where they go underneath where they go underneath so the flat bases where you cleared off the uh, bottoms or you filled in the bottoms of the uh, mushrooms I'll do those first of all I'll do halfway and and like so right and let me just check here we are that's where I was going to go and this one so these are half ones half ones yeah. fix that in close so by that I mean just use a little rotation little touch of your tortillon by fixing that graphite in place it will stay nice and dark then lift the pressure and just bring it up okay fix it in place there's a whole lot of stuff I could tell you about shading. Um, but I do that in my Shade with Confidence class. You don't need to be afraid of shading. Just embrace it. Understand what it does. And by adding the shade, I'm hoping you can see they start going underneath, don't they? Even more than when they did when you put that ink in place. Okay. As I said it's real time I'm not going to cut to where I finished all this I'm doing this with you at the same time okay. lift the pressure if you need to turn your tile so you can face your tortillon towards where you want it most precise okay and a bit there there I can add a little bit more graphite. Always have a nice sharp pencil when you're shading. It gives you a longer length of graphite to lay down graphite particles. But it also means you can be quite precise with where you want it rather than trying to scrub along with a stubby little thing. And Okay. like that and I won't sing to you you really don't want that agony and there we go okay so let's bring this out and again you may well find you get done and they go oh no there's one more to do there's always one more to do um, There, there's one more. There's one more to do. I told you there would be. Oh no, I've seen one more to do as well. Here it is. There it is. And the more you tangle, the more you become aware of things, and you you just know if you've done them all or not. Um, or generally, you will. Okie dokie. Two more down here. Have a quick scan of your tile just to see where some others might need. Where you've got maybe the half ones on the edge of your tile. Okay, by adding that shade, they're now accentuating them going underneath. But the other area that is going underneath is here, these arches. So underneath this arch, you're going to add some graphite. So find the tops of your mushrooms. And here I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it upside down here and here. Okay. You could almost say it's underneath your original. If you go to underneath your original um, arms of your well, you will cover it all. Okay. Either go for, look for the tops of your mushrooms or say, well, I'm going to do it underneath not on your aura side but the original line work of your um i've gone a blank well <laughs> aren't you pleased i go a blank yeah. it's do you know why it is it's because i'm actually enjoying doing this and so i start going into that tangle zone 
that we all know and love where you just calm and quiet and for me when I'm teaching it's my brain starts to slow down and sometimes I can have to really work hard to um, find the words um, so you have to sort of train yourself to do it so you can see find your find your well and go underneath there's the aura side here there's the aura side and there is the underneath that original line now doing it with a five means I know where it is because it's a slightly thicker line if you do that those wells all form the tops of a mushroom shape okay there. and can you see how they're starting to it's starting to come to life a lot more okay so I'm going to continue looking for the well and like we did with the aura but this time we're going underneath those darker lines or the original line and you're going to add your shade underneath those and you will therefore shade underneath all your mushroom tops there's underneath there underneath here it's nice just nice and quiet just enjoying using your pencil and your torching looking at your tangling coming to life there we go. I'm gonna do this one as well I've done a two two of my well shapes I've added graphite to like so and like with many, many tangles like this, it creates additional space that you can then say, well, actually, I'm, I'm, I fancy adding something else onto this. And you can add additional tangles and you might be going, what's she on about? It's like embellishing. If you imagine these are shields and not mushrooms, it's like embellishing shields that you can do and enhancing the shapes that you've created, the overlap and the underlap that make it come to life. And, but I think just doing something as simply as this, well, it's not, it's not, doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It has potentially more value if you embrace the simplicity of a tangle, before you start going all twiddly and fancy, there's a real joy in being able to do that. Um, sometimes less is more. Uh, and this is one of them, if you're doing this for the first time, this is definitely one of them. Okay. And I haven't got much more shading to do. I think I'm almost there. I'm going to do this one. I've got two more maybe. Two more wells going underneath now, underneath those curves. And this one here. And I've got one more I can see. I've just caught, caught my eye. I can see down in the opposite corner. Go. Always be careful. Once you've got a lot of graphite on your tile, just watch where you put your hand. If you've got a lot of graphite, grab another tile or a piece of paper and rest it on top and that will protect it, okay? The other one that I could see was down here. And it was saying, I'm still here, Joe. I'm still here. Oh, and <laughs> there we go. I start seeing more now. There we are. Two of them I have down in the corner. And I've just done a quick scan. Quick wash over with my eyes to have a look. And I think I'm almost done. And there you go. 
have a quick look over. That's oh lovely, almost done. With my pen, I've done my shading. I'm going to add my chop down the bottom here. Always pop your initials or your chop on your tile. Own it. Let it become yours. And I'm going to pop my signature. And now you'll see what date I have done this on. And it is the 28th of April. 2023 and it is what the well and it's by boat Jody Genovese and she's a CZT from the USA okay and that is what the well isn't it fantastic so I am just very quickly going to show you, this was a, <laughs> this isn't a perfect version, okay? This isn't a perfect version. This was one that I did as a little practice, but it just starts to show you, you can start adding some very simple embellishments. And with this, I just popped on the bases here, a little triangle and a dot, a little triangle and a dot. But it comes together and it starts making it look so much better. And this one I've now done some embellishment with. So you can see on one column, so column, column, column here, I've actually added, used blue ink, I've done bouffant in here, I've done sand swirl in here, and I've done um, some flux in here. And then very simply, a bead line going through the centre of the other ones. And if you uh, go to the Mosaic app, you'll be able to see lots and lots of versions of this. So thank you for joining me. I can't wait to see what you do. Please do send me um, pictures of what you've done um, to my Facebook page, Zen Zenjo Zentangle, or even on here on YouTube. And I hope to get see you again soon. Bye.